Today, I'm going to be talking about how the media does certain things, and uh, some potentially are deliberate, some perhaps not, but deliberate or not, they help to cover and shape how we discuss crimes committed by people who either are seeking asylum or have a foreign background more generally. Now, I have my suspicions about this. I think that there may be... Uh, state motivations because of course the relationship between say the state the intelligence services and media is pretty strong particularly in the UK and we know it exists in the US as well and so I wanted to set out a blueprint of how journalists can help cover up something that I feel like is quite important and uh, I think that's best demonstrated by a recent story that has come out in Britain although this sort of um, method of Basically, censoring information could work for anywhere, um, any country, um, as long as you've got journalists reporting on stuff. So this is the stuff to keep an eye out for. So what I have here is a tweet I did. I know, yes, I'm including my own tweets, but it's a headline that says, Man charged with murder after woman dies in hospital following stabbing. So obviously that doesn't give much away about the details of who these people are, obviously. And I, and in this, I pointed out the man is an 18-year-old called Deng Chol Macek. Um, and there's a way of figuring out who these people's names are. And uh, I don't see many people doing this. But if you ask um, any AI program, because it's got access to a wealth of information, you can say, um, where is this person likely from? And it will give you a pretty precise answer. So it can, it can tell that this person is most likely... Um, an ethnic Dinka from South Sudan. South Sudan, of course, being uh, known for being a war zone not too long ago, right? It, it, you know, it, it was just Sudan not too long ago. And so, obviously not a safe country. Interesting that they were over here in the first place. But he did arrive in Britain illegally by a small boat, and that was back in July. And that's where he claimed asylum. And then the woman he murdered... Um, was allegedly working at the same ho well, allegedly murdered, should I say, for legal reasons, um, worked at the same hotel where he was staying. And I feel like these details are pretty important for the character of the story, right? And um, I got that headline from this here. And you could say um, maybe it's the limited information that the, the media gets when a story first breaks, um, rather than their unwillingness to cover it. Because if you look at uh, the actual police report you don't really get much in the way of details about these people um, so you, you get none of the important details for politics um, and they're trying to present this as they're not trying to bias proceedings you can see down here look um, he has a right to a, a fair trial there must be uh, sharing of information online that may um, anyway prejudice these proceedings and of course you know, I'm going to adhere to that because it is the law. Um, but I still feel like the police should be publishing information, more information, because when a case like this is of national importance and it informs public policy, there should be an exception. And so it's not just the media. There is also involvements of the authorities withholding information that I feel like should be public to have a, a rational civil discourse about these things because we need to know the details of it. And... Um, I think that that's a perfectly reasonable request. You can still do that without necessarily biasing the proceedings, can't you? The problem is that we have an anti-racist state. It's a state that is full of activists who are saying that any kind of criticism of people's other backgrounds is immediately racist and prevents people from talking about the background of, of um, you could say, criminals. Mm -hmm. It's the idea of something being in the public interest that's what often gets said or used yeah. to used to get said like for example the details of how michael barrymore used to live when there was someone was found dead in his swimming pool if you remember that like apparently all that was in the public interest mm. right you know uh, where diana goes on holiday and with whom that's in the public interest but who this uh, alleged murderer is not so much it's like mm. well it, it seems like public interest tends to be in government's interest doesn't it mm. ultimately yeah. But it is worth mentioning as well that the reason that we're talking about this and the reason we can expose these sorts of things is because we are you know, an audience-funded organisation. We have a merch store. You can also sign up to our website. 
where you can get, you know, from the merch store at least, which is accessible from the website, you can get nice things like this. This is my own personal copy of this, this t-shirt from the merch store. I feel ridiculous covering my face with the t-shirt, but um, I'm actually really looking forward to wearing this. But this is for a limited time only um, until the US election is over. So make sure to pick some stuff up if you like the look of it. Um, and if you want to, to, our coverage to continue, make sure to sign up to the website. With that out of the way, um, it is worth mentioning as well, lots of others, um, other outlets. Here's the Express and the Star saying, charge amended to murder following Bescott stabbing. Just a man originally charged with attempted murder is now being charged with murder after a woman died. That's about as little information as you could possibly get, isn't it's it? It's always in the passive voice. It, it is, isn't it? I was about to point that out myself, actually. But no, no do carry on. Well, no, just that. It's just in the passive voice. Um, so it's just somebody died. Mm -hmm. just somebody died because of somebody. I think that this is a good observation and it has to do with uh, the leftist mindset because it's all about structures. People don't have any agency. It's all about the kind of structures that the left wants to destroy. They get all the credit and the blaming for all actions. That's why they want to say that, hey, this little poor man, he was actually a victim of circumstances, so we need to tax you even more to change the circumstances of would-be criminals. Yeah, socioeconomic factors actually stabbed that poor woman. Um, and, and here is another thing that, that quite often goes on. They focus quite a lot on the victim rather than the perpetrator, and we'll see how that differs when uh, the races or the ethnicities of the, the victim and the perpetrator swap places. So um, here the son, woman 27, stabbed outside football stadium station, dies as devastated family pay tribute to it. And, you know, no mention of the actual details of it but the sun to be fair as we'll get onto later did report on some other details which were important but if you got your, your information from this first article you wouldn't know that and of course to go to the guardian here um no mention who of who either of them were no mention of motive and again it's showing a picture of the victim and not the perpetrator and now let's compare this to the guardian's coverage of another recent event so here is a man um who, ha who is a, an Austrian painter enthusiast, for, I say that for the sake of YouTube because it doesn't like his, even his name. Um, he was, he stabbed an asylum seeker in a hotel, sort of unprovoked. And of course, they've got a picture of him and you might say, well, it's just that he's been convicted and there's a mugshot and this other person hasn't. Um, but let's just have a look at all of the media coverage of this. So it's worth pointing out there are eight pages of lots of articles with his name his face um, you see it carries on and on and on and on you see his name him uh, you know doing the Roman salute all of this sort of stuff loads and loads I think there were eight pages when I had a look um, previously now let's have a look at this other guy right um, so the crime scene the victim some police cars uh, a, a, just a generic photo there from the independent victim, 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 police. Just nothing, right? Hmm. And all of the coverage of this previous guy um, shows the man himself from when it happened onwards, right? And so all this does is put a focus more on the victim. Isn't that tragic? Isn't that terrible? How can men do this? You know, it almost turns it into a feminist issue. Whereas in the previous one here, you know, aren't these, aren't white people dangerous? Aren't they scary? Look at him. He looks terrible. That That's basically what's trying to be communicated here. And of, of course, you know, bad guy. I do not approve of what he did. Or uh, the person who was guilty of this. You know, I, I don't support murder, funnily enough. Uh, just to be perfectly clear. Um, but there are some more details. And you wouldn't actually know them unless it was for these journalists at the Daily Mail who reported on it. They actually reported that he was an asylum seeker from uh, a small boat that arrived in July, and the woman who was murdered was a hotel worker. And in fact, the son followed up on this, and they talked about the actual weapon used. It was a screwdriver, and in this, and I'm going to read from it, but somewhere in here, I, I can't necessarily find it, but there's the scene. Um, it says, It's understood a petty row over a packet of biscuits is said to have taken place at the hotel earlier. So you can see why 
this sort of thing is suppressed because a 27 year old woman you know young woman was stabbed in the neck uh, when she was getting the train home from work after working in a hotel with asylum seekers in it um, with a screwdriver she didn't know it was coming I think he sn snuck up behind her and stabbed her in the neck because he wanted a packet of biscuits that weren't his from what I gather is it not frustrating and it's just infuriating that the left constantly says everything is political they're politicizing almost everything except for these headlines these headlines are not supposed to be presented as a political matter well it's i think just they're someone... deliberately uh swept under the rug aren't they yeah and um it's also worth mentioning as well that the mail has um talked about the actual family and and tried to, to focus on the damage that it's done. So they're one of the only publications in the UK that's done anything other than maybe GB News. Um, but there are also other cases of this going on, right? Um, here is another um, man charged with three counts of attempted murder. Um, can we guess what the background of this man is? Um, did he break illegally into the country? No, well, it's actually uh, an Indian man from uh, the Punjab, based on his name. But um, interesting how three counts of attempted murder. Remember that that guy who had eight pages of news articles on on you know Google News. Um, he only attempted to murder someone, and that was one person, and he had his name and face plastered everywhere. They had screenshots of his social media this person you know you know I, I don't think it's fair to equate human lives as equivalent but you know potentially three times as number of people murdered attempted to be murdered should i say little kids as well oh yeah a woman and the children and and for some reason this doesn't get the same sort of attention as as other things a two-year-old yes yeah, an utter monster isn't he and we're shown in the neighborhood yeah, we're, sh we're just shown. It was, it was the houses that did it, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's right. And of course, um, there are lots and lots of different examples. Um, here's one, another one. And this is, um, of course, not just me saying that they're trying to sweep it under the rug as well. Um, the family of the person murdered here is saying that the authorities tried to sweep his death under the carpet. So it, it's not just, you know, me with a bit of an agenda because I'm anti-immigration, the people who are victims of these people say the same thing about them. And in, in this particular case, um, it was an Afghan national who stabbed him over a row, over an e-scooter. And you can see why they want to, to sweep these things under the rug, because these foreign people, they, they don't necessarily abide by the same rules and laws of Europeans or North Americans. They'll stab someone over a packet of biscuits, over an e-scooter, which they could potentially rent out anyway, I imagine. And they say that he killed two people in Serbia before murdering mm. Thomas Roberts. Yeah, and so it shows the complete failure of the system. This career criminal, he sold drugs in Italy, um, apparently. Um, he um, killed two people with an AK-47 in Serbia, and then he posed as a 14-year-old boy um, posing as someone who had had his parents killed by the Taliban and got into the country. How is he not in prison in Serbia until he's an old man? How I know, yeah. Like, but this is anarcho-tyranny, right? This is the nature mm. of it. You say the system's broken down. Well, if you think it's deliberate, it's working very well. Mm. Call me cynical. Yeah, well, I think that if you if you push criminals onto a population and then the only thing that they can turn to is the government. It does help empower the government, doesn't it? Following some woman to the station, stabbing her in the neck with a screwdriver over a packet of biscuits, mm. is <laughs> it's the, completely, it's completely insane. It's about as immoral as you can possibly get. Yeah, it's like yeah. the most petty thing possible amounts to murdering an innocent woman. Yeah, it's monstrous. Mm -hmm. And also the other side of anarcho-tyranny in this case is that the government is not going to deport this person most probably. They're going to say, well, he is not going to have a good time in Afghanistan, so we're not going to... Human rights be... abuses in Afghanistan say so we, we can never return him. Yeah, let's drop all... those public security and safety. We all know the humane thing is uh, pass a law that allows him to be hung 
by the neck until death. That's the best thing for everyone, right? Let's do that. And uh, there are also cases like this one. This was another asylum seeker, um, I believe. Uh, I can't remember where he was from. Oh, Moroccan. Um, I don't know why they're claiming asylum in the first place. But he just killed a random pensioner um, because he was worried about Palestine, as if those two things equate. Uh, this did go around the news just because it couldn't really be suppressed. That and his own flatmate, wasn't it? I seem to recall. I remember. Well, he threatened his own flatmate oh. with a knife, yeah. Oh. But it, it's to the extent whereby just being English is enough to have a target painted on your back by some of the people we're allowing in our country. And they obviously want to hide that. You know, a woman can get stabbed for a pack of biscuits, a man can be stabbed for a, an e-scooter, a random pensioner can be stabbed for being English. This is what they're trying to cover up, right? This is the stuff that's trying to be brushed over because it's so damning to what has been done to us, to all Western countries, really. And um, if we go to this from Migration Watch, just see the sheer number of murders from asylum seekers. And, you, you know, this each bullet point represents another case. Many of them you know, will be familiar with. Um, you've got the, the asylum seeker there blowing himself up outside of Liverpool Hospital in 2021. Um, you've got the murder of Lorraine Cox in Exeter in September of 2020. She was beheaded, I think. Uh, by an asylum seeker and then Sudanese asylum seeker um, stabbed six people including a police officer uh, in a hotel in Glasgow June of 2020 and then another one triple stabbing in Reading Park by a failed Libyan asylum seeker and you can see why they're, they're trying to suppress this because if you look at this this is pretty frequent now isn't it murders used to be very very rare in Britain we used to be a very very peaceful country you know murder used to be something that would grip the nation when it happened. I mean, you're, you're um, probably able to Old remember enough. that. Old enough. I didn't want yeah. to Old say time. that. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah. I'm sorry, Bo. No, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, yeah. Sometimes you would have the, the odd, crazy atrocity, like the Hungerford killer or something like that, or the guy in the 60s that killed a couple of little kids and put their bodies on railings. Yeah, it would be like, that would, people wouldn't forget it for a generation or two because it was so rare and so insane. Uh, but now it's just so common that they don't even... Like, just the Emily Jones killing, for example, one of the most horrific things you can imagine. Uh, just, you know, they never really talked about it. You always hear about Stephen Lawrence. Mm. They won't mention Emily Jones very often because it's so terrible, so horrific, and so damning. And so damning. I mean, many um, of these cases are incredibly damning, aren't they? And that's why I think they're trying to keep them down, is that... They look. They reflect so badly on not only the failures of the government, but also just the, the quality of the people we're letting in is not there. They're not. Po it's not possible for them to integrate because they're doing acts of savagery that are sort of unconscionable to the native bit British population, aren't they? And it's not just Britain, isn't it? It's all over Western Europe. I saw one in Germany the other day when a Syrian stabbed a little four-year-old girl. I think she survived, but just completely insane. There was the guy in France that went on a rampage with a knife around her. Uh, a, a playground mm, yeah. uh, another one in and Germany some woman beheaded a little kid in the street a few years back do you remember that one mm -hmm. uh, like a full decapitation of a small child like it's unbelievable and to just pretend it's not happening just pretend anyone that notices it is uh, 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 an insane fascist or Nazi or bigger or something no 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 we're not going to accept that we cannot accept that mm -hmm. no this is a crime flooding us with foreign criminals of the worst stripe is a, a crime unparalleled in human history i've said that a few times but it really is i know I never before agree. have we been has this been done to us before in all of our recorded history but by by them suppressing the details what they're effectively doing is that they're trying to make them less memorable aren't they because if if you know what happened it allows it to stick in your mind if man kills woman well, that's so vague, it, you can't really encode the memory. And, and to get a bit psychological here, um, your long-term memory encodes semantically, meaning it encodes meaning. And if you've got no details to encode it into your long-term memory, it makes it harder to recall it. And if it's harder to recall it, then it makes you um, less hesitant 
um, to welcome these people in, which you should be, because look at it. it. There's so many people being killed by these people. Also, something that needs to be said is that a lot of countries are not publishing data of crime mm-hmm. with ethnicity. And those that do, do so only to the extent that they want to promote the narrative that all crime is economic in nature and they completely neglect culture. And they completely ne- neglect, for instance, whether people originate from places who that still have barbaric practices. And this is yet another, yet another element of the narrative that prevents people from seeing reality. And let's not forget one other thing. These are just actual murders. Mm-hmm. There's an endless laundry list of people that didn't actually die. And an endless day after day after day of people that were merely assaulted in the street. Endless clips you can find. And that's just the clips. That's your real, real reality. The endless examples every single day where someone's intimidated or assaulted in a minor way on the street for daring to notice or say something or just be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. These are just the actual murders. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what an unbelievable thing. Yeah, so to to wrap this up, I suppose I should give some solutions to this because we are often, uh, you know, people lament. You point out all these problems, how do we fix it? Well, it's just a matter of having the political will and making sure that the media actually reports on the details of who these people are, what their motives are, who their victims are, just having more information. And that includes recording people's ethnicity. As far as I'm concerned, there should be a league table. If you, if your home nation commits more crime than the native population, I'm sorry you're not allowed in, right? That, that should be how it is. You either have people from, you know, neighbouring countries that are similar or, you know, in the case of Britain, perhaps, it, it wouldn't be too bad if we had, I don't know, people from Norway. You know, they're not going around causing problems, really, are they? And that sort of thing, I think that asylum seekers should never be able to be given citizenship if we accept them at all, which I don't agree with personally. And, um, yeah, I think that what's going on here is a deliberate suppression attempt. But what's really going to change here? I don't think that this is going to change, at least in the United States. There are enough parallel institutions that they can report on these sorts of things and they get out and they eventually reach the president. There's no such thing for... um, the UK or many European countries because we're a lot more censorious. I think that's why this has been allowed to go on for so long. But if this, you know, is to be put a stop to, we need to do those things. I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're doing, you can follow Connor's series, Tomlinson Talks. Here he talks about how hope not hate might have broken the law. And if you want to see what else we're putting out, you can always follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.